First thing about jazz is that it has so many functions. Uh, first, there's the communal function. That's the, coming from the New Orleans music, where it's played to celebrate uh, births, funerals, uh, the, the celebratory aspects uh, of the music, the parade, uh, which around the turn of the century was a real popular thing. You had bands like the John Philip Sousa Band, and it's, it's a heroic sound. And jazz music is the American version of that appropriation of something European. Then you have the whole dance connotation with jazz music, which I think it, it reached its most popular point in the country with the swing era. But though, still the elements of jazz are in all of the music. Then you have the, the element of refinement of folk themes, which you find in all classic musics. And uh, this is what the jazz musicians do with the songs of Cole Porter and George Gershwin. Like when you hear Ben Webster play a Cole Porter song, the art of jazz is what he performs on the theme. Uh, like Hoagie Carmichael, when he first heard Louis Armstrong do Stardust, he said, man, I wish I had written that. Oh, it, it can't sound any better than that. Then you have the, the conception of New Orleans jazz, group improvisation, uh, cooperative ensemble playing, which functions exactly like a democracy, which is each person has the right to play what they want to play, but the re responsibility to play something that makes everybody else sound good. So it's the way that these horns relate in the rhythm section, it's a, a, like a musical example of how a democracy should work. Then you have higher levels of dealing with jazz, like the spiritual and the intellectual level, which uh, is not dealt with on that level, the combination of the, a lot of the African and the European sensibility. Uh, the type of attitude that, that, that respects a certain type of form and structure, but has the American conception of humor, which also pokes fun at it. But you can't really successfully poke fun at something unless you know what it is. So it, it, it's something that deals with knowledge and, and, and dealing with the knowledge and being serious about it, but also the American hum, humor aspect, which is, yes, well, now nah, I have this together. It's like a cocky type of, all right, here we go. It's like the whole conception of somebody like Michael Jordan on a basketball court. If you think of all these people just sitting around struggling just to get the ball in the hole, and then here's somebody talking about, you know, 360-degree turns and then a jump shot off floating from the hairpin and all this stuff that they do. That's a humorous thing. Then you have the whole vocal music tradition that's in jazz. The greatest singers like Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan, uh, Mahalia Jackson, who's not a jazz singer, but she's an honorary because she was so great in gospel music that they consider her a jazz singer. And you have a tradition of instrumental virtuosity, which has produced the greatest innovators on each on any instrument. Like the trumpet will never be the same after Louis Armstrong. There were great trumpet players in the European tradition, and there were great trumpet players in the African tradition of playing the trumpets they played. But when Louis Armstrong played the trumpet, he simultaneously innovated in both of those idioms. And that's true on every instrument. Paul Chambers uh, on the bass, and, and Jimmy Blanton, Ray Brown, Art Tatum on the piano, Thelonious Monk on the piano, uh, Duke Ellington in composition. This whole harmonic conception, his conception of form, emotion, logic, structure, his conce the conception of the Duke Ellington Orchestra, which is a whole aggregation of individuals. And he had to conceive of music that would allow each of those individual personalities to speak and grow and develop. So that's a different conception from, let's say, a European composer who sit down and say, okay, I'm writing for trumpet. Duke Ellington was writing for Cootie Williams' trumpet, or for the trumpet of Ray Nance. Uh, now, this is not to say better or worse, because certainly no one can sneer at the masterworks of Bach or Beethoven. Only a fool will do that. But there's a lot of that going on nowadays, but it's very foolish. It's just to say that this is an American conception, the fact that this is not just trumpet. This is Cootie Williams' trumpet. It's like a democracy, individual voice. But you have to fit it into the context of the ensemble, but it's still Cootie Williams' voice. Or let's say in African music, you might have improvisation, but a lot of that music is purely functional. Okay, we're going to do this, and this year part is based on this. It's not, you're not going to see the elevation of the individual like you will see with Louis Armstrong 
are with Duke Ellington. So it takes from different musics around the world. It has a folk element, like the functional elements of folk music. And it has the elements of refinement, extension, and elaboration, as Al Murray would say, of a fine art music. And it, uh, it has an, an evolution in which different aspects of the tradition have been taken out and developed. Like Charlie Parker developed one aspect of it. Thelonious Monk developed one aspect of it. John Coltrane developed a spiritual aspect and a call and response aspect of the group polyphony. So there's so much in jazz music to be studied and to be learned. 